raising this concern. Uh, it has been my concern for the past 20 years or so. Uh, this is the genesis of the problem, and I want all of you to listen to this. It will change your perception forever. This is the genesis of the problem. When the British people colonized us, we were under British colonization, that was when formal education was introduced. I saw the curriculum that was developed to educate Ghanaian or the people of the Gold Coast was not based on producing people who would become well prepared to develop Ghana. Remember, during the colonization, they were focused on exploiting our resources in the form of gold, timber, cocoa beans, all of them. So they were training people with a system I call critical, critical educational system. So when you complete your education, you become a clerk. They put you in charge of a number of people and you have to be their representative to enforce the slavery, uh, you know, uh, the slavery policies. Oh, I, I'm going to re uh, report you to my master that hey, you have to work hard, you have to do this. And then you, the one who has gone through that system, if you are an artisan or a very good musician, you will not play your music anymore. You have to wear some dress and put on tie in, in, in this hot weather and put on suit so that people will look at you and say you are educated. Now, I mentioned Kumar's name earlier. He saw all those things, and he called these things imperialism. So when we became independent, there was a golden opportunity for us to draw our own curriculum and make music and dance the core of that curriculum. Because your knowledge, knowledge of your ancestors, will never dwell in English language. It only dwells in your music and dance and your language. We had the golden opportunity to draw a new curriculum for the education service. But we failed. We always say we are doing a review of the existing curriculum. And here is the case that when I was in primary school, in a village somewhere, they wrote in our classroom, speak English always. Speak English always. And you see, we have grown to believe that knowledge is about speaking English. No. So this is the genesis of the problem. And I have approached Ministry of Education on so many occasions. Recently I met the minister because she actually worked in academia before getting that position. And I mentioned these things to her and she said, bring a proposal. That wasn't the first time. That wasn't the first time I was doing that, bringing a proposal. Because, look, there was a debate in which the current director of the World Bank, who is a Korean, was also on that panel of the debate when I spoke to the minister. And the Korean person said to us that Ghana is like Korea in 1959. Yes, because the Koreans were poorer than we were in 1959. Malaysia was poorer than we were. But when they start to their indigenous knowledge, they never relied on anybody for aid. There are people we call development partners or investors. Let me tell you, what you do not know is that if one person comes from somewhere, calls himself or herself an investor, any one dollar or every one dollar they invest in your community, they take back four dollars. Do you do number work? Someone gives you one dollar and takes four dollars. So you count yourself in that community. How many are we? One million people. So one million people, if one person gets a one dollar contribution, so you get what? One million dollars. And you invest it in your community and you can take four million dollars back. And who will benefit? Your own people. But here's the case, every time we are saying we are, we, we are inv uh, waiting for investors, then these people come to exploit us. It's because we are far from our indigenous knowledge. Now this is concern, because there are so many people here 